Mr. Waters needs no lecture about what's happening to black folks at the bar of justice. We're running them in there. We can't wait fast enough. Everybody on the Action Evening News with a coat over his head and handcuffs is black. We're throwing black people in. And comes along Professor Butler with what he believes is a remedy that can work. It's already in existence. He cites these noble examples. So, as the president of the National Bar Association, the oldest and largest association of African-American attorneys, I ask you what you think of Professor Butler's thesis here. Presentation. We start out with a serious problem in the criminal justice system. However, Mr. Butler's analysis is indefensible intellectually and ethically. He is wrong. Tell us that. Give him a chance here. We are, we are a nation of laws, not people. Any group could come along and say, I'm being discriminated against. Have a special set of laws for me. That is what African Americans have suffered historically at the hands of discrimination. We cannot get justice for us by having injustice for other people. If I'm a victim of crime, if I'm, a, if I'm a victim of crime, I want justice. I don't care what color you are. Black jurors do that every day. They send black people to jail, they send white people to jail, and that's the way it should be. If we want to talk about rehabilitation, that's the judge and the probation officers to do that. Well, Phil, let me make the point that my proposal isn't divisive. The, the, race, the criminal justice system now is divisive. The drug laws are what's racially divisive. If you're African American and you use drugs or sell drugs, you go to jail. If you're white, by and large, you don't. According to the government's own figures, according to the government's figures, black people are about 13% of the people who use drugs and we're 80% of the people in prison. Now, was, did I create that Paul, divisiveness Paul, or am I addressing it? Am I coming up with a solution to it? We, we need, if we disagree with those laws, we should try to change those laws. Well, keep, That's what we should do. Well, let's talk about what happens when we try to change them. Anarchy. Anarchy this Well, let's, tr let's talk about what happened when we try to change them. There are these racist laws about cocaine. Now, the kind of cocaine that black people use, you go to jail for a long time. The kind that white people use, powder, you don't get much jail time. Get the same amount of time for one gram of crack that you get for a hundred grams of powder. People say that black people, you don't like that, go to the legislature. We went to the legislature. We petitioned the Congress. The group that makes the laws told the president and the Congress, it's a racist law, you ought to change it. The president and the Congress just said no. We well, like this well, law. We well, prefer to preserve you, you, it, you, even, though we, even though it might be racist. You are playing in the hands of racists getting white people to think that blacks are going to go in there and not follow the law. You know how many blacks are going to get struck from jurors with these ideas that you're espousing? It's very, very dangerous what you're doing, and it's not right and it's not fair. We need to be fair to all Americans. No double standard. No I'm standard hurt. justice. Amy Jackson joins us, yes, and still another attorney at law, and what do you know, a real live woman now will have an opportunity <laughs> to make her own case. We should say, Ms. Jackson, you are an attorney in private practice in Washington, D.C. You are a former prosecutor in yes. D.C., so you need no speeches about what it's like there. You've been an urban area. I assume we can expect uh, a, certainly a disproportionate number of uh, defendants of color that you have uh, seen in the dock. And you would want to say, what about Professor Butler's idea? I would say this. There is racism in our society. There is racism in the criminal justice system. They need to be addressed. The problems in the system of incarceration, the lack of rehabilitation need to be addressed. Problems in sentencing need to be addressed. But his remedy and those problems have nothing to do with each other. I would suggest to you, <laughs> if, a, if a white politician or a white state's attorney or a white attorney general stood before you and said, as long as the crime happened in a black neighborhood, as long as it's a black kid buying crack, we don't care. We're not going to arrest him. We're not going to do anything about it. It would be seen as racist. It would be seen as genocidal. We don't care about those kids. People in the African-American community don't want the drug dealers on their 
corners. And they have sent many of them up, haven't they? As it black is, jurors. In D.C., it's black jurors who are viewing the black defendants. Yes. It's often black police officers and black judges and black court personnel. Yes. And these jurors are engaging in nullification. Again, I'm not making this up. I'm a prosecutor in the same court that Amy existed, that Amy practiced <laughs> law in. I, and I it don't happens think Paul's every day. experience is as extensive, but every single day, they are returning verdicts. Yes, there are occasional verdicts in the misdemeanor cases. And jury nullification is an important thing because it says if there's a situation where it would be unjust, where it would violate the conscience well, to vote guilty, even though the law says, yes, you don't do it. And jurors have that, right. that inherent so power. So it's there anyway. All, all the professor wants to do is bring it out of the closet, uh, uh, call the public's attention to its very noble tradition, and say that it's happening anyway. And so let's allow the judge to at least say, if you, you know, the law allow. Incidentally, as a Catholic educated person, the Summa Theologica was my reference. St. Thomas Aquinas, obey your conscience. I don't think that saying to somebody, your possession of crack should go unnoticed, that is fulfilling a higher moral purpose. I don't think that's what you talk about when you talk about jury nullification. what about when you tell them it should be rehabilitated? That's what I want. I hate drugs. I wish people wouldn't use them. I wish people wouldn't sell them. But just but the sending criminal them back home isn't going to do it. There are drug courts. There are innovations. There are a lot of things you can do. Yes, I agree. We're just going to acquit across the board. That's you are as robotic as saying convict across the board. You obviously haven't read my article because I've the other half. Of it. Well, not not all. I couldn't all read of it. the whole thing. Well, <laughs> I, I wonder why. The uh, problem is that I don't know what that's supposed to mean. <laughs> well, I don't know what you meant by I couldn't read it. <laughs> well, it isn't that long. It's not that long. Why couldn't she read it? The, I have a solution. I hear these people complaining about racism and criminal justice. What the heck are you doing about it? I have a way to what keep. What are you advocate. doing about it? This is not doing anything about yes, racism and criminal justice. It's keeping people justice. out of prison when they don't belong well, there, well, and when the, prison doesn't well, help the community. One, one of these people that you want to keep out may put a knife in your back one day. If, what would you do about that? Well, I'm trying to prevent that. If you because you know, call the police and scream. Does anyone the think that prison is rehabilitative? What happens when you take a nonviolent 19-year-old kid and stick him in a box with a bunch of murderers and rapists? Yes, that's right. That, yes, prison does not rehabilitate people. If I don't disagree with that. Right, if, so, if, if you rape somebody, that's what if we you need rape, to take your you brain kill, power and fix. That's what you need to harness the energy. Right, so when people say that, they, they, when fit. people say that, they say, "Oh, you ought to worry about black people. You don't have a right to complain about the law. You don't have a right to address the white lawmakers. Concentrate on being a mentor to black people." That's I not say, what I as said. a law professor, That's not what I, I have said. a responsibility to address the law and the power that all jurors have, and to tell them I, how I think we might use yes. that power responsibly. Yes. From your law journal article, the Yale, Yale Law Journal article. Considering the costs of law enforcement to the black community and the failure of white lawmakers to devise significant non-incarcerative responses to black antisocial conduct, the professor writes, it is the moral responsibility of black jurors to emancipate some guilty black outlaws. Oh boy, let's sell this to the white folks in suburbia. We'll be back in just a moment.